Day of the Circus. For Jerry of the Circus. Hey, Bumps, where's Rags? Oh, around here someplace, I guess. We just finished our final walk around. Mm, that's funny. It's not like him to go running off. Oh, don't you worry. He'll be back. <laughs> you can't lose him. Gee, it's a nice day, isn't it? I, I just love this backyard on days like this. The show going on just as regular and the music and all the costumes. Well, now, Jerry, you're getting sentimental. Guess I feel kind of sad. You do? Why? I've been over talking to Kelly. Well, I don't know a jollier man on the lot than Kelly. <laughs> He's the best cheer-upper I know. See, that Irish menagerie man's got more animal stories than anyone else in the business. Yeah, I know. Oh, come on, Jerry, snap out of it. We're getting paid now, you know. Yeah. Well, say, Kelly must have been telling you a whopper to get you down like this. No, he wasn't telling any stories. Well, then whatever's wrong. Did he hear about the new? New what? New. G-N-U. Oh, you're talking about an animal. Yeah, the one that died. Oh. Yeah, one of them died in Fordham. Eh, seems like an awful lot happened in Fordham. I'll say. Oh, now, Jerry, there's no reason for you to feel so upset. But they're pretty animals, so gentle. Well, I knew about it when it happened, but you were so all fired busy, I guess I never thought of mentioning it. Mr. Randall must feel pretty bad. Of course he does. But after all, when you're around so many animals all the time, things are bound to happen over a long period of time. Oh, I don't feel so bad about the one that died. Well, I thought you said that... Say, what on earth is going on behind that funny little freckled face of yours, Jerry? Well, you see, it's like this. Kelly says the other new, her name's Maud, is going to die, too. Oh, what? Yeah. You see, she's left all alone, and she's grieving something fierce. Kelly says that happens now and then. Animals just die when they lose another animal they like a lot. Yeah, I know that's true. Oh, well, that's really a shame, Jerry. Yes, that's why I'm feeling so sort of blue, and yet it's such a swell day, and it's so good to be here. Well, we'd better get going, Jerry. Guess I'll just sit here and wait for Ace. Oh, no, you don't. He's probably over at the wagon now. Come on, Jerry. Now, you can't help that new by worrying about it. Yeah, I know, but... I sure wish there was something I could do. Say, there was a good house today. I never saw so many kids. Yeah, they sure liked your act. Yeah, I didn't have any trouble hearing them applaud you and El Mundo. Oh, he was going great today. He sure was in a good mood. He, did you hear him squeal after he picked me up and put me on his head? I sure did. Looked like you most lost your balance for a minute. I almost did. I was so surprised. He never squealed like that before. Scared me for a minute. Oh, just high spirits, Jerry. That was all. It's funny how much I'm getting to like that elephant. I never was scared of him, but now I... Well, I can just hardly wait to work with him. Well, that's the test of a real animal performer. How do you mean? Well, an animal and his master have to like each other to do their best. And if you really love your animal, you can make him do lots more. I suppose that's so. Oh, well, here we are. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Well, hello there. Brought your pay envelopes around. Oh, say, thanks. A sign here. Here's an indelible pencil. Well, that's service. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay. Too many folks in the midway. Mr. Randall thought it better to have me deliver the envelopes. Here you are. <laughs> you can read my writing. Oh, sure. Well, so long. So long. Funny rags wasn't here. I feel kind of mean opening this pay without him being here. Oh, well, it's yours, too. <laughs> 
Hey, it's good to have this makeup off. I wonder where Rags is. Guess I'll take a look around. No, no, wait a second. I'll walk away with you. I want to see Mr. Randall a minute. Sure. Here, I'll hang up this stuff. All right. No, where's my belt? Oh, there under the chair. Huh? Oh. I'm going to buy something special for Rags this week. Oh, good. All right, let's go. Well, what are you going to get him? Oh, I don't know. Huh. I'll think of something. You know, I think it's pretty nice the way you always buy Rags a present every week. Well, money doesn't mean anything to him, and I guess he earns some kind of a bonus. He sure does. <laughs> yeah, but must, most folks wouldn't think of that. Pumps? Huh? Now what? Look over there. Where? Coming from behind that bandwagon. Huh? Well, well, I'll be... It's Rags. It sure is, but what you got in his mouth? Rags, come here, you mutt. What you got? Jumping horse feathers. It's a cat. A cat? Hey, hey, Rags, Rags, put that down. Why, you'll hurt that. Here, Rags, put that cat down. Oh, look, right at your feet. Well, of all things, poor little kitten. He looked bumps. He's been hurt. You think Rags did it? Look at him, so proud of himself. No, if Rags had done it, he'd have his tail down. Well, he must have found this cat, and, and it couldn't move. So he brought it to us. Can you beat it? Well, dogs are funny, aren't Nice, they? Rags. Sure, that was nice of you. Thought this cat needed some attention, huh? Oh, poor little thing. It looks half starved. I'm going to get it some to eat. You better get it to the doctor first. Yeah, I guess I had. He was over to them in an Adri tent a while back, trying to make that poor new eat. You know, it's tragic how animals will starve themselves to death on purpose. Oh, I don't care, Mr. Randall. You can say what you like. Belko says those things on purpose to humiliate me, and I won't stand for it. I just won't. <laughs> Sounds like the Major's on a rampage again. Oh, poor Major might. Being a midget certainly makes him sensitive. He's, he's a bully. That's what he is, a bully. Oh, now, now, Major, don't take it out like that. I, 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 I'm sure Belko's just thoughtless. Thoughtless? Thoughtless? I appeal to you. Just a minute, Jerry Bumps. I want you to hear this. What did you say if a big bully called you a dummy? Yes, sir, a dummy. You, you don't mean to say Belko said you were dumb. Well, not exactly that. But he said I'd make a good dummy, you know, for a ventriloquist. I guess that's insulting enough. Oh, he was probably just kidding, you, you know, trying to be funny. Kid nothing. He was trying to humiliate me, and I won't stand for it. I won't. Uh, he thinks he's so smart. You know, some people just like to brag. That's probably what he was doing. Mm, why, do you know what he said? He said that... That beef eater said, said that I was just a sample. A sample, do you get that? Sample of what? Sample of a man. Bah, you think I'm going to stand around and take that kind of talk from, from a human crane? Thinks he's wonderful because he can lift heavy weights. Well, now, just calm down, Major. I I'll talk to Belko and see that he's a little more careful of what he says. And that's not all. You ought to hear the lies he tells. Lies? Sure, a lot of nonsense about being able to drag a truck with his teeth and swing a trunk around his head with his teeth. Well, can he? Well, of course not. He's just talking, showing off in front of all these towners. Offered to play basketball with me if somebody get him a basket. Well, now, that's really going too far. I'll say it is. Why, why, I was just speechless. That's what I was. Imagine throwing me through a basket. I never heard of such well, nerve. Well, uh, now, don't you worry anymore, Major. I'll see the Belko. But you go on tonight and no nonsense. Now, you hear me? All right. But I'm warning you, I'll not stand to be belittled by a man made out of just muscle and bone. Well, all right, all right. I guess I proved before that brains are more important than brawn. Yes, all right, Major. I'll see Belko. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I know when I'm right. Well, goodbye, folks. Well, goodbye, goodbye. Major. Boy, Major can sure work himself up into a stew, can he? <laughs> yes, he certainly can. <laughs> He gets into a perfect lather, but as soon as he flies off the handle and gets it over with, he feels better. Well, Jerry, what have you got there? Rags just brought him. Huh. Isn't he cute? Poor, poor cat. Well, he looks half starved. Oh, it seems as if it's hurting some way. Yeah, when Rags brought it in, it just lay there on the ground. Didn't get up on its feet or anything. Well, you better get it some food, Jerry. Thanks, Mr. Randall, I will. Thought maybe I'd better let the doctor see it. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jerry. We can't take it with us, but uh, we will do what we can for it. Why, you're swell, Mr. Randall, but... Oh, couldn't we just... Well, it wouldn't be in the way or oh, anything. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, Jerry, but that's quite out of the question. Say, uh, Bumps, I've been wondering... Mm hmm what about? Well, do you suppose Belko can do all the things that he claims he can? Well, no, I couldn't say offhand, but there have been men with phenomenal teeth who did unusual stunts. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I, I was thinking that... Say, that's a good idea. Imagine really doing those stunts in the sideshow. 
Boy, that ought to pack him in. Well, I wasn't thinking of the sideshow, Jerry. You mean... Yeah, if he really is good, it might be worth featuring him under the main top. Say, boy, that'd sure burn up the major. Oh, no, no. All he wants is to be the main attraction in his own tent. He doesn't care what happens under the big top. But he certainly raises a rumpus if anyone steals his thunder in the sideshow. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say he does. Hey, what you gonna do, Mr. Randall? Well, I'm not sure, Jerry, but uh, you might do an errand for me. Sure, anything you say. Well, uh, run along and take care of your cat first. And then look up Belko and send him to me in the office wagon. I'm headed for there now. Sure, I will. Oh, Sam, I meant to ask you if I could get Lester over in the workshop to rig me up some kind of a fake uh, bull headgear for Ray. Yes, yes, if you think he can manage it, Bumps. Oh, I'm sure he can. I know what has to be done. All right, all right. Go ahead and tell Lester you've got my okay. Right. Well, I've got work to do. I'll be seeing you. I'm sorry about the cat, Jerry. But I, I guess you've got your hands full enough with rags. Mm -hmm. well, goodbye, Sam. Well, bye, Mr. Randall. Coming, Bumps? Well, I guess I may as well. Got nothing special to do. Bumps, I'm awful disappointed. You don't know how I hate to leave this poor little kitten behind. Well, maybe it'll be best in the long run, Jerry. Never can tell. If it's hurt bad, the traveling mightn't be good for it. Well, here's a menagerie tent. Hope the doctor's still here. M mind holding the flat back? Hmm? I, I kind of got my hands full. All right. Sure thing. There you are. Hey. Come on, Rags. Come on, boy. <laughs> After all, this is your patient. Hi there, Kelly. Oh, hello, Jerry. Are you back again? Yeah. Uh, the doctor around? No, not now, but uh, I expect him back any minute. Good. We'll wait here then. Well, hello, Bumps. How's tricks? Oh, fine. Uh, say, what you got there, Jerry? It, it's hurt. Poor little thing. Thought maybe the doc could help. Sure thing. How's your patient? Well, I don't know. I can't seem to interest Maud in anything. And it's breaking me heart. Oh, poor Maud. Look at her just laying in there. Say, she's looking at us. No. You're right, Jerry. Say, that's more interest than she showed all day. Uh-oh. Oh, there she is turning away again. Well, that's the trouble. Sure, if we could just keep her interested enough... So she'd, she'd be... want to keep on living, huh? Yeah, the rest would be easy. Because there's not a thing in the world wrong, except she's graving her heart out. Say, Kelly, hey, look, she's watching us again. Say, you don't think it's this cat, do you? No, what she'd want would... Say, wait a minute. Here, give me that kit. Careful now, don't hurt it. I won't. I, I just want to see if... Say, Kelly, I believe you've hit on something. Hey, look, Maud's watching. Kelly, she is. Yeah, I guess she thinks the cat's more miserable than she is. But look, she's getting up. She's moving oh, over. Kelly, wouldn't it be wonderful if... It... Now, wait a minute, folks. Here comes the doctor. Maybe he'll know what to do. Uh -huh. 